I welcome you back, my dear friends. Uh, today we are going to discuss our next topic, uh, World War II. Okay, if you follow your syllabus, read your syllabus, it's on eCourseWare. If you scroll down the bottom, uh, the news section, you will see the syllabus. Those of you who either <laughs> forgot somehow or maybe neglected it, so consult your syllabus. Requirements are still the same, except attendance, uh, which uh, will be included into your quiz grades. So your attendance will be included into your quiz grades. Anyway, we uh, recently discussed um, three countries, Russia, Soviet Union, Germany, and the United States. So three patterns, three different ways of dealing with the post-war environment. Again, in this case, we're talking about World War One. So in the post-war, post-World War One, a lot of countries, a lot of people, they uh, got used to martial methods, mobilization, dictatorships became popular. And uh, as we said, even the most uh, democratic countries, which had a long democratic tradition, they were not immune from the general rule. They also had this uh, fascination with strong, strong personalities a desire to increase big government, to squash market. Um, and it was natural. A lot of people uh, naturally accepted it. Uh, plus, we mentioned that um, the settlement of World War I contained the seeds of the future conflict. Okay, And these seeds became visible in uh, how Germany was treated. I remember Germany was basically mistreated in the wake of the second uh, first world war uh, a lot of germans hated the republican government that had been imposed on them by western powers and they were looking for revenge okay we discussed national socialism in germany how adolf hitler came to power and how he designed his regime to become an expansionist regime okay the desire to take revenge on the Western countries who humiliated Germany was very strong in Germany. So that is why uh, up to 40% of population, 40% of Germans supported him. And later when he came to power, uh, the rest of society opportunistically sided with him, especially after he started to expand to other countries hijacking the other countries and robbing their resources and delivering this loot to the Germans, okay? Hence, National Socialism. Socialism for the Germans only. That was the slogan, okay? Today, we are going to discuss how World War II started, how it developed, and what led to the defeat of Germans. Now, we're turning to our lecture. First, uh, reviewing what we just said, we need to mention again the goal Germany uh, wanted to restore her glory and prestige. So, in contrast to World War I, where everybody essentially was responsible, all countries that were fighting each other. Now, it was Germany that was the initiator, Germany that one triggered the whole thing. Although, Again, it was not the only one. She was not the only one. There was another country. And we are going to talk about this, another country. Germans wanted to undo the humiliating uh, peace treaty. Okay. Plus, Hitler was haunted by the specter of the German famine. Because at the very end of the First World War, in order to force Germans to surrender, uh, Great Britain and France, they imposed a total blockade, food blockade on Germans. So Germans were not able to trade with other countries to purchase food. As a result, more than 400,000 German children, women and some men died from this hunger. So Hitler was haunted by this and he wanted to make sure that it would never happen in future. How to guarantee to make sure this would not happen in the future? You need to expand, you need to hijack or seize more 
agricultural areas to secure the food base, to secure the agricultural territories for Germany, for, 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 for the Germans to produce more food. So that is why Hitler talked about so-called Lebensraum, which means living space. And his goal was uh, eventually to expand to Eastern Europe, particularly to Ukraine, to seize this breadbasket of Eastern Europe and to use Ukraine to feed the Germans, to guarantee Germans this uh, food security, okay? Essentially, it was not only about the food, of course, food was the major thing. It was also about different types of resources Germans wanted to use, uh, German, uh, Germans and Hitler, National Socialists, wanted to use to benefit uh, the Germans only. Again, I repeat, that was the message of National Socialism. We need to seize resources of other nations in order to benefit Germans. That was the goal. Uh, I also mentioned that um, step by step, gradually, Hitler started to ignore the stipulations of the peace treaty. At first, he uh, introduced a military draft, which was forbidden by the peace treaty. He uh, reignited the military industry by hiring hundreds of thousands of workers to work at the military factories, which essentially destroyed the unemployment, remember? One of the important questions which I included into my quiz, did Hitler uh, eliminate the unemployment? Yes, he did. He did eliminate the unemployment. By what? By expanding public works and by giving jobs to Germans at the at military factories, the military industry. Then he takes, o his, o then he takes over his uh, native country of Austria. Remember, Hitler or originally was an Austrian. He moved to Germany. Then he took over so-called Rhineland. That was the area that had been controlled by France in the wake of the First World War, a coal mining area. Eventually, Germany concluded a peace pact with uh, two friendly nations, Japan and Italy. Okay? And together, they decided to fight against France, England, to stop communism and to stop liberalism that was the goal the last um, thing that uh, increased hitler's appetites was the munich agreement of 1938 and I, again i want to remind to you that formally hitler was right in this case he wanted to uh, get united with a small german minority that lived within Czechoslovakia, a newly created country in the wake of the First World War, so-called Sudetenland, 3.5 million Germans who also wanted to be reunited with their brothers and sisters. So Hitler uh, said, I want this area, and uh, France and Great Britain, behind the back of Czechoslovakia, decided to give this area to Hitler in exchange they made him sign a paper, an agreement that he wasn't going to attack any other country. And of course, being a dictator who didn't care about treaties and agreements, Hitler immediately violated this promise. Uh, as soon as he seized Sudetenland, he rolled on and occupied the entire territory of Czechoslovakia, which uh, was a huge coup for the biggest coup. Why? Because Czechoslovakia was uh, the number one country in Europe at that time in terms of military industry. Uh, Czechs were very important in interwar Europe, developing automobile industry, tank industry. They were building machine guns. They were building armored cars. So a lot of um, military industry. So Germans laid uh, their hands on this and used this industrial potential to expand. So it was the license to expand. He felt that nobody could stop him. And finally, um, he concludes the pact with another brutal dictator, equally vicious, Joseph Stalin of the Soviet Union. Together, these two dictators decided to divide Eastern Europe. Hitler wanted to pacify the Soviet Union in order to attack and defeat Britain. And the Soviet Union also was afraid that 
the Great Britain and France pushed Hitler to occupy Czechoslovakia in order to force Hitler to attack the Soviet Union. That's what Stalin thought. Okay. Neither Hitler nor Stalin trusted each other. But at the same time, they concluded this peace treaty, non-aggression pact, to formally promising that they would not attack each other. That was the formal agreement. But the major thing was the secret protocol included into this non-aggression pact. According to the secret protocol, Germany and Soviet Russia had to receive chunks of land in Eastern Europe. Germany was promised to receive the western part of Poland. A Soviet Union was promised to receive the eastern part of Poland. On top of this, Stalin was promised and permitted by Hitler to occupy Baltic countries such as Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, and Finland. Okay. So both dictators, brutal dictators, they divide Europe, and here's the map that shows you how this division was made. Okay, if you look carefully at the map, you will see that um, these areas colored in um, blue and dark blue were to be occupied by Germany. The areas colored in um, uh, light brown were to be occupied by the Soviet Union. Okay, and that's what they did. In fulfillment of this agreement, and that's when the World War II started, so very important. In fulfillment of this agreement between the Soviet Union and Germany, on September the 1st, on September the 1st, I repeat, German troops attacked Poland from the west. Almost simultaneously, a week later, a week later, Soviet troops crossed the border of Poland from the east and occupied the eastern part of Poland. In fact, in September, in September, both armies, Red Army and the Nazi Army met each other, and here uh, they concluded another agreement, so-called treaty about border and friendship. So Hitler and Stalin concluded the second treaty about friendship. So they divided Poland and they marked the border. Okay. So that's when the first, Second World War started. If you go to history books, you will see that almost all history books tell us that Germany was the one to start the Second World War. <clears throat> and formally it was correct. But hardly any textbook mentions that it was Soviet Union along with Germany. That was the counter that started the Second World War. A week later, Soviet Union attacked Poland, almost simultaneously. Yes, chronologically, Soviets were the second to come. But these two nations invaded Poland and decided to tear apart this country, to squash this country and destroy it completely, to phase out uh, Poland from the face of the earth. And that's when um, England and um, France had to step in. They were connected by a peace treaty with Poland and France declared war on Germany and then UK declared war on Germany and they did it immediately after September the 1st 1939 so since uh, three countries became involved in the war uh, Poland UK and France against Germany we call it um, world war the world war other countries later joined but the Soviets see Soviets were very cunning smart they um, stepped in a week later, so that is why formally, even though they were aggressors, but they kind of st stayed out of business. So Stalin was a very cunning person. <clears throat> in my view, it was these two countries that initiated the Second World War, but no history book will tell you about this. Okay, It will always tell you it was Germany only. Okay. Since um, uh, Hitler easily occupied Poland again. His appetites grew and grew, and in 1940 he rolls on in the west and invades Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark, occupies these countries. France, that tried to prepare herself um, for resistance, was literally overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, destroyed, surrendered. Uh, Hitler occupied the entire territory of France, and French 
people were so shocked by the uh, motorized invasion of German sudden sudden invasion they did it so quickly suddenly they could not recuperate they could not they were in a state of shock so that's how Hitler became the the, the, the biggest fan of this um, uh, military tactics called Blitzkrieg Blitzkrieg means lightning strike so he strove quickly in uh, hope to defeat a nation and that's how he succeeded okay um, English troops that were stationed in uh, France they had to retreat back to England and um, Hitler started bombing England okay the war started severe war between UK and Germany and England mobilized herself and she was able to bomb back uh, Germans Germans retaliated so um, a great showdown England was alone um, against all these resources mobilized by Hitler so see he occupied all these countries and he used resources from all these countries against UK UK literally was alone okay at this point if those of you who watched uh, movie uh, Dun Dunkirk Dunkirk that um, you know, I think it was a year ago so you go to Netflix or YouTube or like you will see some copies of this movie uh, Dunkirk describes uh, this um, process of evacuation of English troops from northern France to back to UK and how Germans um, uh, harass these troops okay <laughs> so Germans mobilized a huge military machine but now I have to bring something important that explains why um, Hitler suddenly decided to violate this non-aggression pact between himself and Stalin and attack the Soviet Union and that's what eventually worked well for the Soviet Union because Soviet Union um, turned out to be um, a victim of this aggression and eventually since uh, it um, came out as one of the winners in the Second World War so history books don't mentioned that originally uh, the Stalin's regime along with Hitler Hitler's regime these countries were the true initiators of the Second World War anyway why did Hitler suddenly decided to attack the uh, Soviet Union um, Soviets and Germans had an agreement they traded with each other they promised not not to attack each other see they divided Eastern Europe in fact Stalin delivered a lot of oil grain supplies uh, to Hitler in exchange for hard currency in exchange to uh, machines okay but then something happened that changed Hitler's mind what happened R um, Russian or Soviet Finnish winter war according to this pact of 1939 which pact the pact I mentioned between Hitler and Stalin uh, both dictators divided uh, Eastern Europe and Finland was the, a country one of these countries to be occupied by the Soviets but lo and behold uh, Finnish people refused to be occupied they stubbornly resisted the tiny country seven million people decided to resist they organized such a uh, hard resistance that they inflicted the huge humiliating losses on the Red Army okay so here you can see on this slide a few numbers Russia lost 120,000 soldiers mostly to frostbites to severe hunger because Red Army was not equipped at this point by the winter clothing because Stalin thought the occupation would happen quickly and uh, he didn't provide any supplies but Finland lost only 20,000 it was so humiliating and finally Stalin decided not to occupy them uh, Finns and the Soviets concluded the peace treaty yes um, you know, Finnish people seceded some borderland territories in uh, Finland see these areas were ceded by Finland to the Soviets where Soviets um, you know, built military bases here uh, Finland had to uh, uh, Finland had to give Soviets a few islands in the Baltic Sea for Soviet military base, bases but essentially Finland was able to survive as a country 
which was good. So it was a disaster for Stalin, even though formally he won the war, so he got these territories. It was a very, uh, it was a humiliating victory. And Hitler was watching this. That is why I'm uh, stepping in, telling you, uh, emphasizing why this war was so important. Hitler was watching this. And he was shocked by the weaknesses of the Red Army. He said, hey, Soviet Union was a colossus on clay, egg, clay legs. It was so weak. Why do I need a peace agreement with these Soviets? I will just roll on. I will get in, occupy them. Soviets seize their resources, uh, Ukraine. I will get the oil in Caucasus Mountains. I will get the coal mining areas in eastern Ukraine. And I will have all resources ready to do what? To attack England and then to go against the United States. And that was his plan. So that is why uh, Hitler uh, decided to invade the Soviet Union, suddenly invade the Soviet Union, uh, doing his favorite tactics of Blitzkrieg, lightning strike. So a sudden and unexpected attack against Russia on June 22nd, June 22nd, 1941, uh, Hitler attacked the Soviet Russia suddenly and in three weeks he was able to occupy a huge area. Look at this area. Huge area. He's, uh, he occupied almost entire uh, European part of the Soviet Union, including Ukraine, North Caucasus area, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, Belarus, and Central Russia. And he approached Moscow. Only 30 miles away he was from Moscow. Um, Three million Soviet troops uh, surrendered to G Germans. They threw their guns, didn't want to fight for Stalin. That's another thing I would like to emphasize, because unlike Germany, where a majority of Germans supported Hitler because he wanted to do something for Germans, of course, at the expense of the other people, in Soviet Russia, uh, in this brutal dictatorship, society was intimidated into submission. Of course, there were some people, some workers, some communist bureaucrats who lived in cities who supported this regime. But in the countryside, pe many people hated Stalin, hated communism because of the collectivization, because of uh, many millions of people who died as a result of uh, communist agricultural policies. Remember, we talked about it, collectivization, when um, Stalin's regime forced everybody to live on collective farms, they forced everybody to fulfill grain quotas, squeezed grain from people, and even starved to death more than uh, 7 million people. Okay, So there were big groups of people in the Soviet uh, Union who uh, secretly uh, hated the regime. And at the first opportunity, of course, they were ready to betray it. So hence this number, stunning number of uh, POWs, I repeat, 3 million people surrendered to Germans, surrendered to Germans. But unfortunately, Germans had no food to feed them. That is why almost 2 million people of these prisoners uh, died from hunger because there was no food. Why? Because Hitler actually ordered his army to feed off the land, to feed off the land. So you, I am not going to provide you. You need to use whatever you find in those areas which you you occupy remember Lebensraum, living space so you have to seize all the food resources all kind of things and that's what they were doing and they wanted to conserve food and of course they didn't have enough food for other populations so that is why two million soviet pow's died that is why later two million poles died because germans didn't want to feed poles uh, especially those who couldn't work and they literally starved them to death, conserving food for Germans only. And that's, by the way, one of the reasons why Holocaust happened against Jews, because Jews suffered more than any other ethnic group in the Second World War. The major Holocaust, by the way, happened again uh, in Poland when more than two, uh, more than two million Jews were uh, killed by starvation and then were guests in concentration camps. 
because of this brutal policy of Germans who wanted to conserve their food for German soldiers, for the German population, and didn't want to share their food with other, uh, they called them, uh, unclean nations. That's how they call Slavs, uh, Jews, uh, other uh, nationalities that were not Aryan, not so-called Aryans. Okay, so see, it was a desire to conserve food resources. <clears throat> so three million people, um, Soviet soldiers, again, it's not exactly correct, I wrote, not only Russian soldiers were there, there were many other soldiers um, uh, from Muslim areas of the Soviet Union, some Ukrainian soldiers, Russian soldiers, three million POWs were imprisoned by Germans and two millions of them died. Germans almost destroyed the Soviet Union, but then winter came, <laughs> so Germans actually became... Uh, had to face the same situation that the Soviets had to face during the Soviet Finnish war, okay? But at that time, Soviets were uh, negligent because of their own stupidity. They did not supply their army because they thought the victory would be easy. But in this case, in case of Germans, they, um, they, too, were they too believed that victory would be easy and they would be done with the Soviet Union before the first snow came. Um, but uh, unlike um, the Soviets, Germans didn't have any military equipment to be delivered, okay? So they had to manufacture it, they had to produce it, they had to purchase it somehow. It was really, really bad, okay? Because they were so reckless, they thought they would uh, win the war before the winter came. But they were, um, they stretched out their supply lines, they simply didn't have enough resources, didn't have enough manpower. To, uh, to man this area, to control this area, okay? They only could control big cities, but uh, small towns, the countryside, they couldn't control. So they spread around, and that was it. They could not even organize um, advance. So the land, the huge territory of the Soviet Union, bad roads, horrible roads. In, um, uh, in, in, in summer, in autumn, these were roads that... Uh, were dirty roads, there were hardly any paved roads, but when um, uh, winter came, so the winter was so severe that all German um, machines, tanks, tar trucks, automobiles, tanks, uh, they didn't have enough winter fuel, and they stopped. So Germans had to rely on horses and the manpower. It was really brutal. Like if you look, if you watch footage on History Channel, you will see that the German uh, front in uh, in the east it was mostly uh, driving horses and uh, relying on the manpower. Okay, it was really bad because they, all their equipment either drowned in this mud and dirt or stopped because of the lack of winter fuel. Okay, so the mother nature, mother nature, uh, started to uh, defeat Germans. There wasn't so much Soviet troops, okay. The second front was in the Pacific Islands. Pacific Islands. Here, United States and Japan confronted each other. How it happened? Everybody heard, I'm sure, about so-called Pearl Harbor when Japan suddenly, again, the same ta uh, tactics of uh, Blitzkrieg. Japan suddenly, in December of uh, 1949, attacked the United States in the Hawaii Island destroying the American fleet in this area, destroying the American fleet and killing three uh, 3,500 American military men and sailors, okay? Why did they do it? Because original grudge of Japan against the United States was that United States, in an attempt to penalize the Japanese for invading China uh, in 1931, Japan invaded China, seized the huge area of China, occupied it, okay. To penalize for this act of aggression, the United States said, we are not going to ship you any fuel, no oil, no fuel, nothing, no raw oil, no fuel, so total blockade. And Japan didn't have any oil. So Japan was desperate, uh, her aviation couldn't fly, airplanes couldn't fly, so the uh, fuel for trucks, for airplanes, was rationed. It was really bad, of course. And uh, in an act of revenge, trying to 
again in a lightning strike to defeat the United States, they attack US in Pearl Harbor and their long-term strategy was to invade the western coast of the United States and seize these oil fields uh, somewhere to move further in Texas in western areas to seize oil fields okay that was the, the, the tactics of Japan very stupid and reckless tactics as as stupid as Hitler's desire to occupy this um, huge monster uh, Soviet Union so that again uh, you, uh, the Soviet Union, United States, it's a huge land mass. Okay, I remember when we discussed uh, why England uh, was defeated in uh, in the U.S. Revolutionary War of uh, 1776. I quoted you one English general who, in desperation, chased the Washington army through the woods you know he wasn't able to engage them actually so he had to chase him and he by chasing the washington troops he exhausted his red coats and in desperation he uttered uh, the famous phrase you can't i quote you cannot conquer the map unquote and that's what exactly that's exactly what happened with german troops in the soviet union and um same thing in Japan. Of course, Japan did not invade the continental United States, but Japan stretched herself enough in this area, occupying Manchuria, uh, Eastern China, Indochina, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and a bunch of Pacific Islands. So Japan stretched out herself so bad that it also like German, like Germany, she had to man to man all these islands all these territories with her troops and that's how she eventually exhausted herself and not having natural resource resources especially fuel um, it was clear by the way to all to all attentive observers in 1949 1942 that japan and germany would be defeated everybody knew at this time so i ask you not to buy this popular gimmick when you go to history channels or uh, if you open them coffee books that say oh it's such mighty powers like germans they were such a mighty power japan or such a mighty power no they were not mighty powers no not at all uh, germany for instance uh, occupying the entire territory almost entire territory of europe didn't have as many resources as uh, the Soviet Union and the United States. Uh, even the Soviets, whose territory, Eastern uh, European territory, was occupied by Germans, still had more resources than Germany. And entire fuel supplies of Germans throughout the uh, World War II was only 30%, 30% of what united states and soviet union had you know so only 30 percent of what uh, the soviet union and the united states could afford despite the fact that germans seized a bunch of soviet tanks they seized almost twenty thousand soviet tanks uh, through their lightning strike thousands of trucks thousands of cannons a bunch of rifles and they used actually this equipment repainted it and use this equipment against the Soviets. Same with Japan. They had so few resources. They had so few rifles, so few uh, airplanes. So it's sometimes it's hard to understand why these two nations decided to be so reckless to attack uh, the Soviet Union on the one hand and the United, on, United States on the other hand. But anyway, Japan and Germany got together. They made... Um, they made a military agreement to help each other. Italy was a part of this agreement. I remember, as early as 1936, they made this agreement. And um, to support, morally support Japan, Hitler in December, too, declares war on the United States. And that's how the Soviet Union found this brutal dictatorship as uh, um, equally as vicious as Hitler's dictatorship, found herself in the same camp with the United States and England. So since Hitler attacked the Soviet Union, uh, the Soviet Union says, hey, Stalin says, hey, I'm going to be with you, United States and England. So, and that's how we have, again, two coalitions of countries against each other. On the one hand, Germany, Italy, and Japan. 
on the other hand, um, UK, uh, the Soviet Union, and the United States. Okay. <clears throat> the most powerful decision the United States made it was an act of so-called land lease. Land lease, it was an act um, adopted by the U.S. Congress to uh, freely provide um, military supplies and food to her allies. Again, when I said freely, it's not exactly correct. So um, the countries, allies of the United States, which received these supplies, like military equipment and food for the troops, they had to pay partially for these supplies and the rest of uh, uh, payments were to be delivered after they were all um, unused equipment uh, had to be returned back to the United States. Essentially, it was um, uh, an act of Congress to allow United States to provide allies with unlimited hardware and food uh, and uh, partially to be partially paid for this um, for these deliveries. So uh, the allies of the United States were um, actually expected to partially pay for this. Okay, so that's how the United States delivered uh, uh, millions, millions of tons of uh, hardware, aviation fuel, food to the Soviet army, like. All Soviet troops were fed by American, the American canned food. Um, the march of the Soviet army was driven by American trucks. They used American trucks to uh, carry uh, guns, cannons, guns. Uh, Americans um, supplied um, up to 20% of Soviet tanks. Americans um, delivered... Uh, 30% uh, of Soviet airplanes and the Americans delivered almost entire supply of uh, aviation fuel. Soviets didn't have facilities at first to produce aviation fuel. So Americans delivered this. So they had to do, they had to do it again. Um, the bottom line here was that America, uh, Americans wanted to save American lives using other countries, manpower resources helping them buy hardware and food, you know, that which allowed them to save American lives. Uh, when you compare uh, Eastern Front in uh, Europe, Soviet Union against Germany, and the Pacific Front, where the Americans against Japan, of course, in, um, east, in the East, you will see uh, the magnitude of fights was much wider okay, than in the Pacific Ocean. In the Pacific Ocean, we have... Uh, like uh, 2,000, 3,000 troops fighting against the same number of Japanese. But in the Soviet German front, we have millions of people confronting each other, millions of people, okay? During, um, uh, during one battle, which I mentioned in uh, a minute, Stalingrad battle, uh, 2 million Soviet troops surrounded 600 uh, uh, thousand German soldiers. It's uh, like um, amount of people engaged in the fight was outrageously high. So Germany and Japan had very limited resources, despite the fact that they seized some uh, France, Czechoslovakia, and were able to supplement the missing items. Um, the biggest problem: Japan did uh, Japan and Germany didn't have oil. So the only place where Germany could dig for oil and get oil was Romania. Romania was an ally of the Germans, but they had very uh, small oil fields. Uh, Germans were good fighters. Uh, the Soviets uh, were able eventually to mobilize a huge army of 15 million people. And uh, the ratio was five Soviet soldiers for one German. Soldier Stalin you know, didn't care about human beings. He literally drowned Germans and human corpses. So American help and Soviet unlimited Soviet human resources. That's what uh, won this war. <laughs> German uh, Germany started to quickly lose um, uh, since um, January 1942 when a German army was defeated in Stalingrad. Stalingrad battle. Uh, December, January uh, 1941, 1942. It was the turning point in the war. 
as I said here, 600,000 German troops were surrounded by the Soviets, by 2 million Soviets, and that was it. So since uh, then on, Germans were on defensive. They started to retreat. By 1944, Germans were out of Russia, out of Russia. And that's when the United States uh, and UK decided to uh, do so-called D-Day. In the Soviet Union, they called the Second Front. Yeah, it literally was a Second Front. So they decided to invade France in order to fight against Germans in, uh, from the West. So Germany now had to fight against on two fronts, in the East against the Soviets, the major front, and in the West against the Americans and the Brits who invaded uh, Northern Europe uh, on June the 6th, 1944, in the operation that became known as the D-Day, D-Day, okay? And then it was clear that soon the war would be over. May 1945, Hitler commits suicide, Germany surrendered, okay? So uh, at the very end of the war, uh, when everybody knew already that uh, the defeat of Germany was just a matter of a uh, month, even weeks, so allies, uh, Soviets uh, and the UK on the one hand, and UK and the United States on the other hand, they already started to size each other, okay? And um, what to do after the Second World War, okay? In 1944, U.S. dropped nuclear bombs on the Japanese cities Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which forced Japan to surrender. Okay, Japan, Japanese army surrendered. In fact, Japan was um, uh, defeated in uh, northern China by the Red Army troops. Okay, so they, were, they didn't have enough, not only resources, just manpower. So they were quickly defeated in uh, these nuclear nuclear bombs used by U.S. Uh, sped up the whole thing, so they had to sign a peace agreement. And Japan uh, was occupied by U.S. troops, as you know. General Douglas MacArthur uh, and his troops invaded Japan, occupied it, and that was it. That was it. Um, as there is in the course of the Second World War, the humankind was petrified with two things. People saw how deadly uh, the war could be. Of course, the first one, First World War, was brutal enough. Poisonous gas and things like that. But the second one also showed that uh, it, was, it could be equally brutal. And I would like to single out two things, that's, uh, the two things that horrified the humankind. First, Holocaust, when almost 6 million Jews perished. They were slaughtered by Nazi, okay? And again, um, the Holocaust became possible mostly because of the war, okay? The, at first, Germans didn't plan, as I said, they didn't plan to annihilate all the Jews, but the war made it easy because during the war, violence became becomes the new normal. Martial attitude, mobilization, so human life doesn't cost anything. In the time of war. That is why for Germans it was easy to switch to this total annihilation of Jews. And as I said, uh, in addition to their anti Semitism, animosity toward Jews, uh, Germans were mostly driven by a desire to conserve their food resources for their own army. So that is why they starved and did this Holocaust. The most horrifying thing, of course, was the guest chambers in concentration camps in uh, Poland, these concentration camps that had gas chambers, they were in Poland, I repeat, Poland was the area used by Germans to do this Holocaust, Sabibor, Auschwitz, these, these uh, camps existed as killing camps. <clears throat> but another horrible thing that happened with the humankind was the nuclear weapons. Even though uh, the United States used these nuclear bombs to speed up the end of the war, uh, the humankind was literally, sh literally shocked by the mass destruction that nuclear bombs inflicted. So they realized that uh, it wasn't only the poisonous gas that could kill instantly hundreds of thousands of people, but there was some kind of more potent and horrible energy, nuclear energy, that 
um, could destroy hundreds of thousands of people. Okay. In fact, to the present day, there is uh, there is a debate going on in U.S. among historians in other countries. Was it just was it justified on the part of U.S. to use nuclear bombs or not? Some people say that oh, Japan was almost defeated. The Soviets defeated them in Manchuria, northeastern China. Americans almost defeated them in the Pacific. What was the point to use the nuclear bomb? Okay. Um, other historians say, no, no, it was correct. Uh, we were able to save American lives. Okay. Um, the overall uh, result of the war was uh, that more human lives were lost than uh, in the previous war. So we have three, 30 million people died. Um, after the war, when Hitler was defeated, the former allies immediately started to quarrel with each other. Okay. I would like to stress that in the United States, there was a public opinion very favorable to the Soviets. Okay. They thought many intellectuals, um, common people believed that, oh, we would be friends with the Soviets. They would open up themselves. But in Europe, uh, especially in England, people knew better. And... Um, United States wanted to know more about the Soviet Union. So how are we going? How are we going to deal with this country after the war? Are we going to be still allies or are we are going to confront each other? And that's what uh, a new ambassador to the Soviet Union, an American ambassador to the Soviet Union named George Cannon, he was instructed to send, uh, send to the White House, his opinion. So, what? How do you see the post-war relationships between the Soviet Union and the United States? And in response, he sent a long telegram. Then that's how it became known. This document called the Long Telegram, where he argued, um, where he argued that um, Soviets were a dictatorship. It was equally brutal dictatorship. Plus, they are very uh, suspicious of the West. They uh, view themselves as the fortress besieged by evil forces like capitalist forces, the Western powers. And the Stalin was an old paranoid dictator who do doesn't trust the UK and the United States. And unfortunately, he said that in the Soviet elite, they believed there would be an imminent war between the Soviet Union and uh, the West. So we cannot trust these people. Okay. Plus the mistrust emerged uh, already in 1945. The mistrust of former allies. The allies met three times. Leaders of three countries met three times during the war. Uh, in Tehran, uh, Iran, Yalta, Crimean Peninsula in the Soviet Union and Potsdam in Eastern Germany. The most important conference was Yalta Conference, 1945 in Crimea. That's where Churchill, uh, Prime Minister of UK, FDR, uh, President of the United States, and Stalin, uh, the Soviet dictator, they divided Germany. They decided to divide Germany in the western part to be occupied by UK, France, and uh, US, and eastern Germany to be under uh, the Soviet control. Berlin, the capital of Germany, was also to be divided in two parts. Although Berlin, the capital of Germany, was located in the Soviet zone, eastern Germany, to be occupied by the Soviets, still the city itself was to be to, you know, occupied, or was to be divided between uh, eastern part, Soviet part, and the western part was to be to belong to to be occupied by the French, the English, and U.S. Uh, American troops. Okay. Um, another thing, and that's what started animosity uh, between two uh, between the Allies, the Soviet Union on the one hand, and U.K. and U.S. on the other hand. Uh, the, uh, during the Yalta Conference, uh, a decision was made that Stalin, in fact, Stalin promised this that. Elections would be conducted in Eastern Europe. Those countries which Soviet Union occupied, um, as you know, that when Soviet Union crossed the borders, uh, uh, its own borders, he occupied Poland, 
uh, occupied Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, uh, part of Austria, Eastern Germany. And the U.S. and England asked him, um, could you please promise us that you would conduct free elections in these countries? And Stalin said, yes, of course, I will, um, I will do free elections. And like Hitler, he was evil. He never uh, wanted to trust his own, his own promises, even though it was a written promise. Okay, So he, instead of um, uh, allowing people in Eastern Europe, to uh, hold free elections, to do free elections, to have free elections. Stalin imposed on these countries his communist puppets. So he planted in each of these countries a communist dictator, his loyal servants. And by doing this, he violated this agreement with the UK and uh, the United States. And that's what was the first spark that ignited this animosity. Okay. And then... Uh, there was this long telegram which I mentioned, okay. So a new uh, period in the history of the world started, the period that became known as the Cold War. And the Cold War is going to be our next topic. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.